qualify men on these seven things, seven, and I guarantee you a great relationship. That's the topic of the live stream today. How you doing? It's great to have you on here. Hey, the next live stream, so you know, lock in the date now. I've got something really special in that live stream. It is on the 31st if you're in the States and the 1st if you're in Australia. So first day of the month if you are in Australia, 31st if you're in the States. And today we are talking qualifying men, qualifying men on basically a, a really shortened set of standards. So I wanted to talk about, you know, a lot of times we get these humongous standards lists, these, these big long things that we can't really either recall or, or keep track of, or, or it just becomes a big giant list of things in our head. We become too picky. I want to really take that away today. And I want to show you a list that I kind of gave a client a few ideas and she sent back something that I want to show you because it's so freaking powerful. It's so freaking powerful, so cool. And if you qualify men just on these seven things, technically there's eight, but the eighth one is just consistency in the other seven. So qualify men on these seven things and I guarantee you're going to have a great relationship this year. Uh, how you doing? We've got some people starting to come online. It's great to have you on here. We've got heaps of, what do we got? Uh, live stream, yep, 31st and the 1st is the next YouTube live stream. Be online for that one. I've got something special. And make sure you stick around to the end of this one. Stick around to the end because I have an offer for you uh, that I'm taking off the table really soon. So if you want to take action in the new year, like so many of my new clients have been, now would be the time. So stick around to the end. Hey, Oh, I just want to say a special thank you. If I do have a clients watching, I know not all of them log in for these things because they get the one-on-ones. Um, I've had just oh, at least a, a half dozen, dozen new clients come on board who have just been taking massive action this year uh, already. And the cool part is they've put aside the excuses that I had to put aside as well. Resource excuses. You know, I love the Tony Robbins quote, it's never a lack of resources, it's a lack of resourcefulness. They've put aside resource excuses, put aside money excuses, put aside time excuses, and just made it happen. And it's scary because once you put aside money and time excuses, you even have to put, a, put aside, well, what if it doesn't work for me excuses? Uh, and they've done all of that. So if, if there's a client online, if there's a few clients online, I know sometimes you come on here, I just want to say you're freaking amazing for taking action and just, just putting all that shit aside and making results happen this year. Uh, and the cool part is it's happening better than ever because I'm getting better and better at my one-on-one -on -one stuff too, which is lots of fun. Let's get into the content for you today. I've got heaps of lovely people online. Wendy's from Las Vegas. High chance I'll be visiting Las Vegas this year in May, so make sure you, you keep touch with the channel, Wendy. Renee's online from Georgia. Great to have you, uh, Renee from Georgia. Shamer's on. This is live. Whoa, this is live. Correct. Uh, Martha says, running, running like hell. Isabel says, oh, hi, Mark. Hi, Isabel. And uh, Sandra says, hey, from Ventura, California. Be in Ventura as well. Just one flight from beautiful Brisbane. Hey, let's get into the content so we're not stuffing around. Uh, you want to know how to qualify men this year on fantastic standards. I'm going to tell you right now, this is a list. I gave my clients some suggestions. She threw this back at me. Let's take out all the crap, simplify everything. Just use these seven standards. I guarantee you a great relationship this year. The first one. A healthy, masculine, feminine balance. This one really underlies or sits atop or whatever you want to call it, everything else. Because if, if someone is all masculine, this is a woman or a man, if someone's all masculine, they lack that softness, they lack that empathy, that, that presence, that playfulness, that creative side. Uh, they won't be able to ex ex uh, access their own nurturing ability. Uh, even their own presence and sexuality in some cases. Whereas if someone's all feminine and they have no access to a mature, healthy masculine, again, this applies to men or women, you're going to find a much more erratic pattern. You're going to find someone without discipline. You're going to find someone who lacks boundaries, who's too impulsive. Uh, you need both. You do. And, and don't get stuck in the numbers. Yes, women typically will access their feminine a higher percentage uh, than men, obviously, and men will typically access their masculine a higher percentage than women. Uh, but if you don't believe me on this one, think about that meme that goes around, which is which says what I want to, you know, I want that really strong, powerful guy uh, who also has a soft and vulnerable side. I don't think you can, can deny that. That is a healthy masculine-feminine balance. 
It means that for a woman, it means she has her own healthy mask on and energy that she can feel safe in and know she's really, really the role that a good father teaches his daughter is the healthy masculine. And it's the role that a good mother teaches her son is the healthy feminine. Uh, that, that kind of, that voice, that presence, that energy inside all of us. So that's a massive one. That's a massive one. Let me know your thoughts on that. I'd love to hear them. Dorothy says, hi from Brazil. Dorothea, uh, who's that? Karen says, hi, Mark from Utisha, New York. I'll be in New York as well. Uh, we've got Jamaica. Renee Johnson's from Jamaica and Ishtar's from London. Thank you for being on here. I will be in London this year as well. July. Shh. Keep your eyes out for July. You want a healthy guy this year, healthy relationship, masculine, feminine balance, a guy that can access both. And the more you can access both healthy sides of your energy, even if you might spend more time in your feminine, uh, you're going to be a, a hugely attractive because what, that's a woman who can be in her radiance, be in her femininity, be in all her playful, all those sides, and yet still be able to know she's going to be okay without a man, be able to take care of herself. It's literally like having your own man, right? Like, like I, I use the visualization of kind of a, a energetic man behind you. So if the outer men stuff isn't going well there, you'll always have this safe presence within you. So important. So I love this content. Uh, number two, huge, huge. All psychological needs or the vast majority are met in healthy ways. Okay, so let that absorb. If you want a healthy relationship, you want someone who meets all or at least the vast majority of their psychological needs in healthy ways. We all have psychological needs, right? And sometimes we shame someone for, for wanting attention or wanting validation. The reality is, you know, babies have those needs. And if we never got any attention or validation in our life externally ever again, we'd all shut down and not be very well for it. What would actually happen though, most of the time, is that we'd look to get those needs met in not so healthy ways. So needs like, I'll give you some examples, importance, feelings of importance sometimes, attention, affection, belonging, authority, uh, even rebelliousness, something like that, closeness, belonging, these natural human needs. If you're not sure if it is one, ask yourself if a baby would need that. What things do babies need? They need attention. They need affection. They need to get away from their mum sometimes. They need to uh, feel loved and connected. Psychological needs. Is he getting those? They, they, baby even needs to feel important, right? How, what happens when a baby doesn't feel important? They tend to cry. They feel like they don't matter. They, they use the only coping mechanism they have. So if, if you find a guy who's meeting his psychological needs in healthy ways, then that is a huge Huge indicator you're on the right track. To it. oh, it's, a, it's massive. It's massive. Remember, stick around to the end. I've got something special for you. Ah, number three. Number three, great sex. Uh, I like the Mark Manson quote that says, if sex is working, it is 20% of a good relationship. If sex is working, it is about 20% of a good relationship. If sex isn't working, it's 100% of a bad one. In other words, sex only plays a small part when the relationship's working well, but when sex isn't working, it ruins the whole castle. So great sex is number three. Uh, who we got? Debbie says, hello from California. Great to have you online. Debbie, Tanya says, hello from Panama. My God, I love the international audience. Uh, Happy and Healthy says, hey, from Tennessee. This is so cool. Dan says, I miss your miss you on YouTube. You're very smart. Dan, I think I posted six videos this week. So you're... Yeah, I'm, I'm there. I haven't gone anywhere. By the way, let me know what you think of the first episode of bringing someone into the channel. You are going to love the candidates. Michelle is up first next week. Oh, they're so cool. The most empowering, awesome women. You get to see me embarrass myself. You're going to love that little 12-part series. Um, something different, but I think, I think it's just really cool. Jennifer from Connecticut's online, Sol from Car Carolina's online, Yidda's from Austria, and Elizabeth from Arizona. It's great to have you all on here. Arizona, I've heard a lot about Arizona. I'll have to visit there at some point. Masculine and feminine balance. You find that in a guy, healthy relationship. Number two, psychological needs met in healthy ways. Awesome, important. Three, great sex. Number four, real simple. He does what he says and he says what he does. That consistency. I'm writing a lot at the moment. I'm talking a lot about this concept of filtering. 
And more and more, I'm realizing that it's really more about filtering out the wrong than it is calling in the right. Because as soon as you get really good at filtering out the wrong, you are just like, just like a water filter. The wrong just falls through you. And as long as there is water coming through, you catch the right. But if you get stuck with the wrong, that's where you take your filter away or you end up with the wrong person. And that's where you, you lose years, have all sorts of problems. But the more naturally you filter out the wrong, the more easily the right falls in your lap. And I don't think there's a better way to filter out the wrong than to look for someone who does what he says, says what he does. Because things like uh, impulsiveness, emotional unavailability, erratic natures, all this stuff that I've personally experienced in, in women as well, uh, that we all unfortunately do at times. But if it's any more than very occasionally over very small things, this is a huge red flag. And if you get good at spotting people who can't say what they do or do what they say, you'll just filter out a whole bunch of rubbish uh, very, very quickly. Very quickly. It's, and you won't spend any time on the wrong person. It's so important, this one. Remember, stick around to the end. I've got a cool little offer for you. Remember, masculine feminine balance is number one. Someone who can access both sides of their energy, even if they're probably going to spend more time as a guy in his masculine. Number two, all psychological needs or the vast majority met in healthy ways. Number three, great sex. Number four, does what he says, says what he does. Remember, there's only seven. Forget the rest. Just chuck them out. Just chuck them out. Honestly, this is, to me, this list is just gold. Because stuff like looks, right, stuff like same interests, that stuff you'll do naturally. You don't have to worry about it. Don't even think about it. Just focus on this. Just focus on these seven because this is stuff that will take longer to come out, but it's stuff that actually creates a really healthy connection. Let's go to number five. Number five is a healthy priority balance. And this is the person who can, remember, all these require consistency. This is the person who can prioritize you at times, when he's with you especially, and also have priorities outside of you. It's exactly the same for you. In fact, I'd say every single thing here is not specific to men. I, just, I give men the exact same advice when looking for a woman. Healthy priority balance means he's present, uh, particularly, you know, not on his phone. That's a bit of a subcategory of this when he's with you, but he's present, you know, you, you get that quality time. Uh, he prioritizes you some days of the week. He's with you. He's there. You know, you spend time together, all the usual stuff. Uh, and then he can go away and not, be obsessive and unhealthy, right? He can say, no, I'm hanging out with my friends on Saturday night, but I'll see you Friday night. And, and it's important that your instinct is telling you this is natural. It's not him being shady, you know, seeing someone else, whatever. But he does have times where he sees you, gives you full thing. And he also has his own stuff going on. Like whether it's just gym, okay? It could just be gym. It could be as simple as, you know, a work task that he makes sure he gets done. Uh, this is a huge one for me is I've always, I've always found it very attractive when a woman can be very present there with me, just, just so radiant, can prioritize me, show me that I matter. And then she can also tell me, you can't see me tonight, Mark. I've got to see my friends. I've got to spend quality time with Sophie or I've got to spend uh, quality time doing my Pilates or my planning out my next book or whatever it is, right? They can say yes and they can say no to prioritizing me. And I think this is a huge one. It's definitely one I'd recommend for a healthy relationship balance. You want someone who has that balance between the two priorities. Remember, make sure you stay to the end. I've got a cool little offer bonus for you. Uh, who we got? Can you elaborate on two? So I can do a little bit at the end, Tina. I have a look at the replay as well. I don't want to go back over myself for, for people who have been on the whole time. Uh, Dweed says, amen to four. Tina says, love this. Uh, Jennifer says, yes, my major reason why I broke up with my last boyfriend. Amanda says, action speaks louder of words. We've got Sharon on from Austria, and it's probably 3 a.m. in Austria, so Sharon gets a special congratulations for being online. Uh, remember, next live stream, February 1st, if you're in Australia, 31st if you're in the States, and somewhere between the two if you're in Europe. So make sure you're on for that live stream every month. I'm doing these because they're great fun. I don't like seeing you. Let's recap. Masculine feminine balance, number one, can transition between the energies, has some feminine energy in him that he can access. Uh, you'll get a lot more balanced guy if you do that, a lot less 
erratic, emotional, weird behaviors. Two, all psychological needs or the vast majority met in healthy ways. Number three, great sex. Number four, does what he says, says what he does. Real simple. It's amazing how often women filter that in rather than out. Healthy priority balance can prioritize you, but then also doesn't have that, that needy side where he's obsessive and, and feels like he always has to prioritize you. Hershey thinks I'm right as well. Number six, understands healthy boundaries and personal responsibility. Understands healthy boundaries and personal responsibility. So this relates back to impulsiveness. This relates back to his ability, what we were talking about in the last live stream, his ability to hear a yes, his ability to say yes, to, to be accepting, to say yes, and also his ability to be told no. I, I love this quote. I don't know who said it, but oh, I think it was in the boundaries, the, one of the boundaries authors. They said, the quality of your relationships is always from saying no, not from saying yes. Now, saying yes is great because it tends to promote more growth. We've all seen the movie Yes, Man. But saying no is how you really determine the caliber of a connection. So don't go out there and just say no to your partner or your date for the hell of it. But seeing someone's reaction to a no, you'll know the quality of that connection. Because if your partner uh, wants to bring you to the gym, say, and you're not in the mood and you say no, and he withdraws love or he withdraws connection from you for that, then that's not a real sign of a healthy, healthy boundary and healthy personal responsibility there. So if you've got a guy who has healthy personal responsibility, understands that, Hershey loves this content, he absolutely thinks it's great. And if you've got a guy who knows boundaries, he can hear a no and still feel exactly the same way about you through it. He can control his own boundaries so he doesn't expect you to say yes all the time because he can say no to himself. Huge massive, healthy relationship thing. Like, you're just huge. Seriously, these seven, you just do these seven, you'll nail it. You'll, you'll have a great guy and you'll filter in the guys that every woman wants while they're filtering in people who don't have these. They're, they're more focused on how they look or the, the guy's job title or whatever it is. Uh, state of the end, again, we've got something special for you. Let's finish. Oh, actually, I'll do a couple of comments first. We Photo Girl is online from USA. Uh, monogamy with Tina. Uh, Tina says, what about monogamy? Um, not every person wants that. Not every woman wants that. So this is just about healthy relationships. You can certainly have a lot of trust, uh, connection in non-monogamy as well. And uh, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking betrayal is not a thing in non-monogamy or Loyalty is not a thing in non-monogamy. It certainly is. There are certainly non-monogamous couples who have betrayals just the way monogamous couples do. So, but monogamy is one of those things you'll filter it in anyway. Like, okay, he's not monogamous. And we, you'll fit, this is natural. Like, you don't even have to think about that one. Uh, healthy priority balance is a must. Had two clingy guys before. Sherry says, amen. Deborah says, thanks, Mark. Uh, Robin says, the man don't steal from you. That one, I think, goes without saying. Uh, nice. Keep leaving your comments. Uh, Hershey's the best cheerleader. He sure is. Last one, and then I've got a little bonus for you. Uh, well, there's seven, but remember there's an eighth as well. And the eighth is consistency in the seven. There's a little bonus one I want to add at the end for you. Uh, the seventh is self-awareness. So obviously no one is perfect, and not just self-awareness, I think, but the ability to take action on self-awareness. Because self-awareness really alone doesn't quite cut the mustard. If you go to court, and you're arrested for robbery, uh, and you stole the thing, and you tell the judge, I, I was, I'm very self-aware, judge. Uh, I know exactly why I stole all the diamonds. Um, I've, I've got issues coming down from, from my, uh, my upbringing that are causing me trouble. So, look, I'm really self-aware of what's going on. We can just call this, call this even, right, and I can go get pizza this afternoon. Uh, the judge probably isn't going to buy that. Self-awareness is one thing, but the ability to action on self-awareness and improve those blind spots is, is really what matters. So, again, little bonus before I'll go back over the seven quickly. Uh, number one, masculine, feminine balance. He can access his feminine energy in a healthy way. Uh, number two, all psychological needs, and obviously massive amount of masculine as well. You need both. It's a balance. Number two, all or well, the vast majority of his psychological needs met in healthy ways. That could be importance, authority, attention, 
belonging, rebelliousness, validation, um, connection, whatever. Some of those are seen as bad, but babies need them all. So they're all there. Number three, great sex. If sex isn't working, it's basically a disaster. But if it is working, it only is a small part of a great relationship. Number four, does what he says, says what he does. You just follow that one, you'll filter out the vast majority of emotionally unavailables. Five, healthy priority balance. That means he can prioritize you and he can tell you no and do his own thing as well. Number six, understand healthy boundaries and personal responsibility. That is huge. Uh, you can have the others, but if you miss that one, no healthy relationship for you. And number seven, self-awareness to embrace growth and weak areas. So this means he's working on things. He's embracing that growth. Uh, he doesn't just be aware of it, though. As per the court example, he actions on it. Now, number eight, consistency in the other seven. Let's talk about two really important standards that are over time. Number eight is consistency in the other seven over time, right? A problem a lot of women have is he does what he says and says what he does for two weeks, and then they come to me at week six and say, the first two weeks he was great, the last four weeks he has not been, uh, how do I get him back? And I sort of have to say, look, play what's in front of you. Take the last 10% of the time you've known him, which over six weeks is only four days or so. How's he been the last four days? Oh, he's been shit. He hasn't contacted me. There you go. Right? You've you got to play what's in front of you. So consistency over time is a hugely important standard in all of these. Because if he drops off, you've got to play what's in front of you. Uh, and number nine, I really, I really like this one. I wanted to throw it in as a bonus. Hussey actually, actually uh, put, put a video about this one years ago, and I think it just deserves merit because it really is important. How he treats you when he's at his worst. How he treats you when he's at his worst. I think if you're really struggling for standards and you're really finding yourself falling too quickly, if you just qualify someone on how they treat you when they're at their worst, you'll, you'll do a hell of a lot better with filtering because you you really judge relationships and their quality on the shit times. A lot of us forget this. We watch the notebook or we experience the highs of early love and yay, it's great. And then someone loses their job. How do you interact now? Okay. You, you've got to judge relationships on their shit times. So you talk to any long-term married couple, healthy couple, they will say we bonded more over our problems than we did over the good times. So how someone treats you when they're at their worst is a big qualifier. It's a little bonus one I thought I'd tack on the end. Uh, so I did say I'd have a little bonus for you. So at the over the next coming months, you might know about the Empowerment Academy. And what I'm doing is I really want to support you in taking action and achieving your goals this year. I'm seeing my clients work through theirs faster and faster. And I want to see you do that as well. So in the Empowerment Academy, what I've planned to do is... I had feedback that people wanted more clarity on what they achieved through the academy. Like, do I build my life? Do I get the guy? Do I understand men? What's, what's the real result I can look for? So I'm going to be splitting it up. And the good news is that means I can have it in lots of different courses under the heading of the academy. And if you're already a member, you're going to get all of them as they come out. If you're not, you have to grab them one at a time. So the cool thing is I have to, I at the moment still have the payment plan option. So if you want to take action like my clients have done, head to the link in the description now. I'll pop it here. It's makingyours.com.au forward slash academy. This will be, today will be your last chance. I've talk, I'm talking to Brett at 6 p.m. Perth time tonight and I'm removing the payment plans from that because I really want to teach people to invest in themselves to commit fully and there's no risk to it, but that's what I'm seeing is getting my clients the best results. So as of probably 6 p.m. Perth time tonight, maybe a little bit longer if Brett takes some time to change it, I'm taking away the payment plan option for the academy. So today's your last chance to come on board as a full member, get all the benefits and all the future programs. It's a 12 month, you pay it off over 12 months and then it's done for a lifetime. You get all the future programs. This is my thing that I'm, I really want to work on because I know there's only so many clients that I can see kick butt one-on-one. -on -one. And that's why I'm going to put my heart and soul into this so that you can kick butt without having to do necessarily a one-on-one -on -one session. Because uh, I'm already at the point where I basically have to have a waiting list and 
it's it's limiting. It's limited. I can't help as many people. So today's going to be the last chance to grab that. You can go to makingmeals.com.au forward slash academy. I would love to see you in there. And I'm going to be re-engineering those courses towards February and right throughout this year as well. So this will be your last chance to get in on a payment plan tonight. So head to that if you think that's for you. If you want to put any time, money, stuff aside as my clients have been, I'd freaking love to help you. I would love to help you. And if if any reason it doesn't work, you just come straight to me, tell me, no risk-free, all of it. But I really want to see you kick butt this year. Uh, quick summary before I'll get onto some questions straight after this. Quick summary. Masculine, feminine balance. Just, just uh, to summarize, if you want standards, you want a healthy relationship, just look for these seven. Throw out the rest. They'll happen naturally. Monogamy, looks, job, interests, forget it. That'll all come naturally. You don't even have to think about that stuff. Just think about these seven with an eighth tacked on for consistency. Number one. Masculine, feminine balance. He can access both his energies. Number two, all psychological needs or the vast majority met in healthy ways. I'll be writing these down if you haven't already. Number three, great sex. Number four, does what he says, says what he does. Number five, a balance of healthy priorities. Number six, self oh, understanding healthy boundaries and personal responsibility. And number seven, self-awareness to work on problems. Not just self-awareness, but the action taking as well. And as I said, number eight, consistency in all of the above. I hope you got a lot out of that content. I'm going to go through a few questions. Before I finish up today, hit like on the video and make sure you're subscribed with the little bell because the episodes are cool. I really think you'll like the um, channel applicant interviews and... It's finally happening. I've got HG Tudor on next Tuesday night. Next Tuesday night, my interview with Greater Elite Narcissist, Knowing the Narcissist blog writer, over 20 million views, HG Tudor, all the information on spotting narcissists. So make sure you bookmark Tuesday night uh, for, uh, for my next video. You should watch it. It's going to be great. Uh, let's have a look. Denise says the ninth point is critical one as an indicator. Absolutely. That's how he treats you when he's at his worst. Huge one, huge one. And the cool one thing about that is you don't usually know it until three, six, maybe years in. And that's why qualification is an ongoing process. It's never done, right? You can have a great marriage for 20 years and if that person starts being physically abusive, it's not going to make it to 21 or it shouldn't. How he treats you when he's at his worst. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Jennifer says, what should a woman do when a man pulls away at the very beginning of dating? Go invest in men who aren't pulling away. Easy. Uh, agree that you bond more during the shit times in a relationship. Have been married five years now with experience of losing jobs. There you go. Uh, this beautiful Kanala has been married five years and they've all their big bonding has been over, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending how you look at it, the shit times. Uh, Jen Jocelyn? Jacqueline says, what is the fifth, Jocelyn? A healthy priority balance is the fifth. That means someone who can prioritize you, make time for you, and also someone who can say, no, I've got to either do my exercise or, or see my friend or got to do this other thing tonight. Like I, my, even my food prep, whatever it is, I have to do my thing. Uh, apologies if there's a bit of background noise there. I think the pool man has a drill downstairs. It's, it's still kind of holidays here. It's nice. Uh, Sorrel says, uh, hey, Mark, you're so cute. I love your advice. That's a bit cute. Thank you, Sorrel. Uh, YNA says, great info. Remember the Empowerment Academy. Today is the last day you'll be able to get any sort of payment plan on that. You can find it via makehimyours.com.au forward slash academy, and you'll get all the courses that I'm creating. Otherwise, they're going to be split up, uh, and they're going to be about the same cost each for the courses. Meeting someone from online in person for the first time. Tips, says Andy. Andy, the biggest thing I would say is chat to them on the phone first. Uh, if you're unable to do that for any reason, public place, go somewhere you enjoy, only go for half an hour or so, just get a vibe for them. But that's why I prefer the phone because you can do all that in pyjamas. Uh, how do you start a conversation about your standards in the beginning? Uh, Halo, you really don't. You just watch. You just watch actions. Uh, if someone's doing really well and then maybe they lightly push on a boundary, that's when you can kind of be like, well, what was that about? Like this is, this concerned me a bit. Uh, for example, I had a client who voxed me yesterday with a guy who'd lied about his age. 
uh, online. And they met up and they went got along really well, but he lied about his age. And she said, oh, this is a bit of a standards breach. I said, look, it's up to you on this one. Um, but either way, I would call him on it. Because it, it's not like, like, if this is the worst thing he's ever done, it's probably not the worst thing in the world, right? But could it mean he lies about more stuff? Yeah, potentially. So to me, like, if a woman did that to me, I'd probably be like orange flag, but not a red one yet. But I'd definitely... Um, call her out on it you know if i was next date or on the phone i'd be like what's i have to admit that lying about your ass thing freaked me out a bit what's the geo with that like is is you know is this something that happens more like that i almost didn't come on this date again because you because of that and depending on her reaction and what my instincts tell me i'd decide on that if this this lie about her age was a one-off or whether i'd see her again uh, but trust your instincts with that one uh, pajamas perfect as Andy who doesn't love pajamas can a man love a woman after a month of talking to her Tanya look everyone has a different definition of love I really believe it's something that's built long term over long time bonding over problems so by my definition no I'd say that's generally infatuation but my definition is not yours so you have to decide your own definition of love uh, do men have selective hearing? Probably. Dogs have selective hearing. Everyone has selective hearing at times. Uh, I'll take a couple more questions then we'll finish up. Um, Del Daniela says, what if you've been building something with someone online for a year and a half? I'm already feeling I'm not going to like this question. And he starts pulling away with no contact, not being able to meet as we are in two different countries and I'm going in May. Daniela, you out there, if you're going to invest in someone online, do not commit to them until you've met them, at least. Do not commit to them until you've met them and spent a couple of months together. Just don't commit. But Danielle, this is the reason. Emotionally unavailable people love online. They'll talk to you for a year and then disappear. And you've, I don't like using the word wasted, but this is as close to using the word wasted as I would get. You've wasted a year if you've committed. If you've been dating a bunch of other people, there's no real drama with that but just, just learn from this. Uh, he says he doesn't want a relationship now because he hasn't got a stable job. Uh, told him to leave me alone and allow the ones to be ready, but he keeps pushing that he loves me. Uh, okay, first, nice, Magdalene, you're playing what's in front of you. He said he doesn't want a relationship now, so you said, all right, I'm out. Uh, told him to leave me alone, but he keeps pushing. Uh, this is now a boundary function for you, Magdalene. So if, if a woman says to me she's not ready... And I say, great, thanks for your honesty. But then she keeps pushing me and keeping me emotionally hooked. This is now a weak boundary on my part. Okay, so your boundaries are your responsibility. If he's pushing through your boundaries, then honest feedback, you need better boundaries. That's your responsibility to say, no, you are not coming through here. You've said you're not available. Until you are, no. Nope. Block, do whatever you got to do. Uh, do, 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 do you think a relationship that starts with just hooking up can ever become serious? Like, will we all see her as relationship material? Yeah, of course, Miranda. In fact, uh, two of my partners, that's exactly what happened. What do men get out of just texting but not meeting? Attention and validation. Yeah, attention validation is one, Cassie. They get um, basically like a, a distant connection, like a little bit. So men need connection as well, obviously, right? But for a man who has fears of intimacy, who has emotional unavailability, um, they want a very like a level one connection, right? Because that's where they feel safe is like a level one. So they will only go as far as like texting and then they won't want to meet up because they're like, no, I'm happy at level one. And you're sitting there going, what? Why does he not want to meet up? Because he's happy and safe at level one. So that's where you've got to, again, put your own stamp on the situation. Uh, Andy says, I'd like to see you um, touch on more online stuff. Yeah, I can see about doing that. I'm going to put a course in the academy for that as well. Uh, thanks so much, Mark. Do relationship titles matter? Uh, Lizette, you've probably seen my recent video. Not really. Um, what really matters is progression, emotional progression, connection, and trust. I mean, if you get to like some ridiculous years in and you haven't got it, just be weird. But essentially, no, they, they really don't matter. What matters is how you're feeling, what's in front of you, trust and progression. As long as it's progressing, the title will come without you thinking about it. 
Uh, let's wrap it there. Those are some great questions. Thank you so freaking much for coming online. I've got three videos for you next week. You're going to enjoy them. HG Tudor is coming on the channel for an hour talking about narcissism, how to spot narcissists. That was an eye-opening interview and he's coming back to the channel at the end of the month as well. Number two, Michelle, the first candidate to join me on the channel is up and then I've got a beautiful standard video for you as well. So thank you so much for coming online. Uh, I'm going to head over to the Empowerment Academy live stream right now. It starts in about 20 minutes. So if you join the Academy right now, come in the Facebook group. The Zoom link is going to be there waiting for you. You can ask me your questions one on one. Thank you so much for enjoying the live stream. It's great to have you on here. I really appreciate your support in everything I do. You are the best. Kick button your goals in 2019. And I'll see you on the 31st of January, 1st of February for the next live stream.